In the 19th century, a group of Welsh settlers embarked on a bold and challenging journey to Patagonia, Argentina, in search of a place where they could preserve their language, culture, and religious practices. Facing cultural suppression in Wales under English rule, they sought a new homeland where they could freely maintain their distinct identity. In 1865, the first group of around 150 Welsh settlers arrived aboard the ship Mimosa, landing in Puerto Madryn on the arid and windswept coast of Patagonia. The settlers were unprepared for the harsh conditions that awaited them. The Patagonian landscape was vastly different from the lush valleys of Wales, with its dry, barren plains, strong winds and extreme weather. The lack of readily available fresh water and fertile soil made agriculture difficult, and the initial years were marked by hunger and hardship. Despite these challenges, the Welsh remained determined, relying on their community's strong sense of solidarity to survive. They dug irrigation canals to bring water from the Chubut River to their settlements, allowing them to establish small farms and grow crops. These irrigation systems, painstakingly built by hand, laid the foundation for future agricultural success. Cultural isolation was another significant challenge for the Welsh settlers. Living far from the centres of Argentine society and other European immigrant communities, they found themselves culturally cut off, struggling to maintain their language and customs. To preserve their identity, the Welsh built chapels, schools and community halls, where they could teach Welsh to their children, hold religious services in their native tongue, and pass down traditional cultural practices. These institutions became vital hubs for the preservation of Welsh culture and social life in Patagonia. Relations with the local Tehuelche people were initially cautious, but eventually grew into a mutually beneficial relationship. The Tehuelche taught the Welsh about local survival strategies, such as hunting and foraging, which proved crucial in the early years. In return, the Welsh shared agricultural techniques and tools. This peaceful coexistence with the Tehuelche was a marked contrast to the tensions the settlers experienced with the Argentine authorities. Clashes with the Argentine government often revolved around land rights and governance. The Welsh had been promised a certain degree of autonomy and land ownership by the Argentine government before their arrival. However, as the colony expanded and became more successful, the government began imposing stricter control. The settlers faced bureaucratic challenges in securing land titles and were pressured to conform to Argentine laws and cultural practices, which clashed with their desire for self-governance. Disputes over land ownership arose, particularly as more non-Welsh settlers moved into the region, and the government encouraged colonization by other European groups, such as Italians and Spaniards. The Welsh also faced pressure to assimilate linguistically and culturally into Argentine society, especially as the government emphasized the importance of Spanish as the national language. Despite these pressures, the Welsh community continued to advocate for their cultural and linguistic rights, striving to maintain their distinct identity, even while integrating into broader Argentine society. Over time, this led to a unique cultural fusion, with Welsh customs blending with Argentine traditions, especially in areas like music, cuisine, and social celebrations. The Welsh settlements gradually expanded along the Chubut River, giving rise to towns such as Gaiman, Trelew, and Rawson. These towns became centers of Welsh Argentine culture, with chapels, schools, and cultural societies continuing to play a central role in preserving the Welsh language and traditions. The construction of the Central Chubut Railway, funded largely through the efforts of Welsh settlers, significantly boosted the region's development, facilitating trade and communication between the Welsh communities and the rest of Argentina. Despite the many struggles, the Welsh settlers' perseverance and adaptability allowed them to thrive in Patagonia, creating a distinct Welsh-Argentine identity that endures to this day.
The community's efforts to preserve their heritage have been remarkably successful, with the Welsh language still spoken in some areas and Welsh cultural festivals regularly held. Events like the Eistedd Ford, a traditional Welsh festival of literature, music and performance, are celebrated in Patagonia, attracting participants from both Argentina and Wales. The Welsh experience in Patagonia is not only a story of cultural preservation and resilience, but also one of integration and contribution to Argentine society. The settlers helped shape the development of the Chubut Valley and left a lasting impact on the region's agricultural practices, irrigation techniques and cultural landscape. The Welsh legacy in Patagonia serves as a testament to the strength of a community determined to maintain its identity in a foreign land, overcoming adversity and leaving a unique cultural imprint on Argentina. Today, the Welsh-Argentine community continues to celebrate its heritage, with cultural revival efforts gaining momentum in recent decades. Welsh language classes, cultural events, and exchanges with Wales help keep the connection alive, ensuring that the legacy of the 19th-century Welsh settlers in Patagonia endures for future generations.